Hi everyone and welcome back and what I'm going to be talking about today is what I pack in my UK summer bug out bag. Okay now we're in the summer in the UK allegedly um, it keeps changing but now we've got some warmer temperatures um, what I've done is I've repacked my bug out bag um, so it's relevant to the seasons we're now in. Obviously depending on where you are in the world or where you live then your priorities may be different depending on the types of weathers and the types of uh, environment that you live in or the type of threat that you perceive uh, that you might need to pack for. But this is what I pack in my bag for the summer. Um, everything I've got in there is carefully considered. Um, I've practiced using it and it's stuff that I, I would consider important uh, based on my experience. Okay then, so this is the bag that I went for for my summer bug out bag. This is a Vertex Gamut Overland bag. Um, there's a couple of reasons why I went for this. Um, it's the right sort of size that I was looking for. So I was looking for something around about 35 litre mark. I think if you're going for anything anything less than that, you're kind of selling yourself down the river a little bit. Uh, this is 33 litres. Also, what I wanted to go for was something that was more civilian looking than my previous bag. So it was less obvious um, if you're walking through, say, a public area or something. Um, so there's no uh, molly webbing on this. There's no Velcro patches, nothing like that. Um, it is a green colour, but it's more of a, like a civilian brighter green than an olive green. Um, but it blends in quite well with the environment in the forest and stuff. So it works quite well there. Um, also, what I wanted to go for is something that had external um, carriage. So pouches on the outside, basically. And on this one, it's got a quite interesting feature here. So this whole panel zips down and reveals an area where you can either Velcro or molly on a pouch underneath this spandex pouch here so we'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute okay another thing I was wanting to achieve with this bag was to get it in and around the 30 pound mark uh, because of the temperatures and stuff then you don't need to pack quite as much warm clothing or you don't have to have such a heavy sleeping bag so what I wanted to go for is something around about the 30 pound mark so what I'll do is I'll weigh this and I think you'll see I've pretty much, yeah, now that's so 28.4 pounds. So not bad at all. And the contents of this, as you'll see in a minute, is definitely workable in the UK in the summer for at least three days. So what I'm gonna do is go through the external parts of the pack um, and talk about what I've packed in those certain areas, why I've packed them there, okay? so. That feature I mentioned earlier about this front panel here. Now, this is quite an interesting feature. So it's got two G hooks that hold this in place on the side, just as like compression straps there. And then what you can do is unzip this entire panel. And underneath here, you've got a Velcro panel, which is also molly as well. So you can attach pouches of various types on there. And as you can see, I've got an IFAC there, that's my primary first aid kit. Um, again, I've talked about that in a previous video and I'll put a link on, on this video. And then I've also got my fixed blade knife there. So two things that are basically available to grab on the outside, but kind of hidden away. So if I zip this back up now, and I'll do these G hooks back up. If I wanted to access that, med kit all I need to do is put my hand in the top grab the handle that kind of just sticks out and just put it straight out there so it's really handy that feature um, you're not showing off what you've got on the outside of your bag but you've got it readily accessible you can see there I've got a little luminous panel on the top of the IFAC there so at night if I was to look inside there I'd be able to see that straight away again I've spoken about that this is my primary first aid kit so this is trauma kit this is things like uh, an Israeli bandage, a tourniquet, and lots of wound dressings and stuff like that, and a pair of shears, okay? So I'm not gonna talk about that in detail, but that's generally what's in there. So in the top, I can also get hold of my fixed blade knife. So I've got a Mora knife in there. Obviously quite a small blade, but can do most of your tasks that you need for you know, your bushcrafting and stuff. Obviously in the UK, you can't walk around with one of these, all right? So if you was in a situation 
um, where something's happened, but it's not to the degree where it's, you know, like zombie apocalypse or whatever, um, you may need to think about leaving this sort of thing in your car or at home, okay, depending on what's going on, just to be realistic and not be sort of fantasizing about it. But yeah, that just tucks away down in there. So this panel, what you can also do with this, you can unzip it and it's got its own little Velcro panel inside here, a little sleeve. And you can basically tuck that up out of the way. So if you were in a situation where you weren't bothered about whatever you've got on the outside here, you can kind of reveal that and have it, you know, accessible. That would obviously be really, really handy for people out in the States if you're carrying, say, magazines in pouches on the outside and you wanted it to be a little bit more accessible rather than tucked away, then you could do that. Um, but yeah, quite an interesting little sort of mixture of uh, capabilities there. So also on the outside, I've got a water bottle. So there's a litre of water in there in my Pathfinder metal um, bottle. Obviously, you can use that for boiling. So you can see there, it's a bit mucky from where I've been boiling it and stuff. And in conjunction with that then, what I've got here is the mug that goes with it. So got the, uh, the Pathfinder mug. Uh, you can see I put a bit of tape on the side there. So if you were boiling something in this, you could still drink out the mug and not burn your lips. Obviously, you'd have to be careful not to get the flame up against the side of that. Um, and inside what I've got is a little cloth and that does two things. You can either you can either use that for cleaning out if you've been cooking in here or what that does is when the water bottles in here, it stops it from clanking around. OK, it stops down on rattling and noises and stuff, which may be important depending on the kind of scenario you're in. If you're in a non-permissive scenario, you may not want to have a water bottle clanking around. And anyway, I don't know about you guys, it drives me nuts if I have something rattling as I'm walking around the woods. So just for your own sanity, basically. This has side pockets that unzip as well. So inside here, it's got like a slip in the side there and a little zip pocket here. If you've got something really like a decent big size water bottle on the outside, however, you can't really fit too much inside, but it gives you the options of how you're going to carry your stuff. But all I've got on the side of here is the lid to that metal mug, which obviously will help speed up your boiling times if you're boiling water. On the other side then, I've got the obvious. So quick access to the obvious. And then another thing that you want to have quick access to is your gloves. So anytime that you're doing any cutting, chopping, you know, anything like that, um, then you want to have protection for your hands. Obviously, without your hands, you're pretty much screwed, okay? So it's, I think, quite a high priority to have something to give your hands a bit of protection. These are the uh, direct action gloves. I think they're called hard gloves or something. Um, and they've got leather palms on them. Um, quite a decent but lightweight a pair of gloves so good good for use in the summer so your hands won't sweat as much um but you've got that leather palm there to give you a bit of protection and i was actually using these recently while doing a bit of sort of bushcrafty stuff and i was chuffed that i was wearing them because it did actually hit my hand um with the edge of a bladed object and my hand was absolutely fine so yeah really important to have something like this in your kit um so inside this pouch here what i've got opening up there then is all my kind of survival stuff, all right? So in the top, I've got a zip pouch with all bits and pieces, and I'll go through that in a sec. And then I've also got my military survival kit. Now, this is one that I used for a long time while serving, sort of 25 years or so. Um, so inside here, you've got all the usual stuff. You know, I've got snares, I've got fire lighting kit, small amount of first aid kit all that sort of stuff, you know, you're hunting and trapping your fish and stuff. I'll go through this in more detail in another video. But yeah, that's that's good to go, little survival kit there. And so like I say, I've got, what I've got in here is all the sort of larger items for your sort of making stuff and all that. So I've got 50 feet of survivor cord, and that's the stuff that's got the, the various different lines in there. So it's got fishing line, it's got a, a wire strand for making traps and snares and stuff out of. Um, and there's a wax jute strand in there as well to help start fires. Then I've got around about 100 feet of 275 cord. 
So the reason why I've got that is because you can pack a lot more of that in than you can of the survival or, or even um, normal paracord. So you can get a lot more of that within a smaller space, as you can see. And also that's strong enough for most of your tasks anyway, for building things like shelters and all that. Uh, got some lifeboat matches. So obviously another way of starting fire. I've got a folding saw. So that's a, a Barco Laplander folding saw. Um, quite a good bit of kit. Been using that quite a bit recently for building stuff. Some uh, Gorilla Tape, so Black and Nasty basically. As everyone knows, between the Paracord and Black and Nasty, you can pretty much fix anything. Some Zip Ties, again, just handy, but it's a kit to help fix things or to build things. And a couple of heavy duty uh, bin bags. So again, good for improvising things like shelters and stuff, or even water collection. But that's what goes in that external pouch there. Okay, so going into the top pouch of the main bag then. This just unzips like so and opens up. Right then, so what I keep in here is all the stuff um, that are small items or things that I need to get to, you know, I need to access quickly. Well, first thing up here then is a head torch, all right? This is a Petzl Tactica head torch. I've been using variations of these for probably 30 years now. Really, really handy bit of kit, okay? So it gives you hands-free light. So if you are doing anything like, you know, changing a tire on a vehicle, treating a casualty, moving a casualty, even just like cooking your dinner, you know, something boring like that, something like this, it's gonna give you hands-free light in it. It's a lot more awkward to use a handheld torch than it is to use something like this. So personally, I think it's one of those most important things in your bag. It needs to be accessible. So at night, you know exactly where it is and you can get to it really quickly, okay? Next thing out of here then is my secondary med kit. Okay, so what I have this in this, this is all my sort of bumps, grazes, and sort of medication. So things like painkillers, headache tablets, uh, diarrhea, medication, that sort of stuff. So nothing trauma related as such, maybe small cuts and grazes, but nothing that's, you know, sort of life-saving. So I've separated that from my primary med kit and the IFAC on the outside. Again, I've done a separate video on this, so I won't go too much into detail on what's in here. Okay, another thing that's really important then is water treatment. And this is a Sawyer mini water filter. Um, so basically what I've got with this is a big two litre bag. So that's the, the filter itself there with a straw. You can actually drink directly out of water sources with the straw through the filter. But the best way of doing it is by actually filling up a bag. Um, but the bag that you get with that is only a one litre bag. It's too small and it comes with like a really small narrow neck on the on the bottle so what i've done is i've got this one which is a two liter bottle and also it's got a really wide neck so it's a lot easier to collect your water to then process it so the filter fits on the bottom of the bag there and you squeeze it through so cracking bit of kit but i think you need to improve the actual water collection bag that you get with the the sawyer um, mini filter to make it a bit more workable um so next thing here then is what i call my ppe pouch just personal protection equipment but it's the main thing in here then is a set of goggles now why the hell am i you know carrying a set of goggles around um so these are skydiving goggles here um and what these give you is protection for your eyes okay if you're in an environment say if you're in a built up area where you know there's there's been a big incident uh, a bomb's gone off or you know an earthquake um, things are falling down buildings falling down and stuff this will give your eyes protection from you know potentially dangerous stuff in the air dust particles you know bits of buildings falling down stuff like that um, I've had a couple of uh, eye injuries during my service and it's not much fun without your eyes you're pretty much screwed aren't you so um, it's a good idea to keep, take some care of them this has actually got a small switch on the side here that opens up little little um, gaps here on the goggles as well so if you are starting to sweat um, if you're starting to steam up they can give a little bit of ventilation to the goggles also in this bag then what I've got is a couple of uh, masks obviously to give you you know your chance of breathing if there is that all that dust and stuff in the air um, and then some ear defenders as well I've got a couple of those little yellow ear defenders a couple of sets of those in there um, you know potentially you won't ever need them but the size and weight of them 
you know it, it's virtually nothing so i'll put that in with the, the goggles and that and even you know if you, you find yourself in some sort of refuge center following a big disaster <laughs> and everyone's snoring their heads off it might be worth having them just so you can get a good night's sleep you know right then next out of here is stuff for midges and mosquitoes all right so mosquito repellent for a start okay and a mosquito head net now you do get midges and mosquitoes in the uk um i'm actually getting bitten by them right now and i'm you know i'm not in a flipping particularly remote area i'm just in the woods so having something like especially a head net and you can see that weighs well just it doesn't it's no size to it and it weighs virtually nothing it's a real lifesaver okay um and obviously in conjunction with the, the mosquito repellent itself it really is necessary if you're out in the woods in the summer okay next thing here then this is just a little monocular something i've had for years um, you can use this for observing something you know standing off and observing rather than having to maybe to go into a particularly dangerous area you could watch it first just to make sure you could maybe see what's going on before you put yourself forward um, this green tape and the the mesh over the front um, that's just on there because i've used this during my service and then the mesh helps cut down on the glare when you're using it next thing i've got in here so this is just the smaller items that i keep in here just because rather than having them rattling around inside the pack so what i've got in this little waterproof bag then i've got two uh, big lighters two spare lighters i've got two lots of um, toilet paper there i've got six AAA batteries um, so they're all the all the sort of electronic items that I use in this kit use AAA batteries so that's why I've got um, six there and there's also a thing called gear aid which is a patch kit for the um, sleeping mat that I've got inside the main bag so if you do spring a leak you can fix it when you're out in the field I've also got just a, a sealable plastic bag and um, the primary use for that is just to you know get away all my rubbish so I'm not dropping rubbish everywhere and I'm keeping hold of that. That, you know, could be quite important if you was in a, a non-permissive scenario. So if you was getting hunted for some reason, if you're in a dangerous area, um, you don't want to be dropping your rubbish, apart from the fact that it's just not the right thing to do, is it? So I've always got a, a bag in there to, to pick up rubbish. Obviously, you can use this for lots of other stuff, things like, you know, um, e even collecting more water, you know, that sort of thing. Um, so emergency thermal blanket this is the last thing i've got in that that big pouch at the top there so if you were you know in a conditions where it's freezing cold hopefully not in the summer but it's again this weighs virtually nothing and it's it, you know it's really flat and stuff it's always worth taking one of these with you just in case there's some sort of cold casualty um whether it's you or someone else in this top part of the flap then in this zip pouch what i've got is a couple of these little plastic waterproof containers um, this first one here is purification tablets so water purification tablets and there's a whole load of them in there I've got loads and then this one here this is multivitamins okay so not so much for just like a couple of days out but I always carry these in my kit when I'm doing outdoors type stuff just to kind of top up your, um, your um, vitamins and stuff like that because um, the rations that you carry the military rations don't you know obviously there's nothing fresh in there right Okay, this here so this is a, a survival bandana it's an orange bandana now you'll never see me wearing a bandana I'm not a Bon Jovi fan um, but what you can use this for is for signaling because it is a bright color it's one of the only things I've got in here that is bright you can use this for signaling for attracting attention you know so if you were on the side of a hillside and you're injured or someone else with you is injured and you see someone else moving around if you needed to attract attention you've got that okay rather than all this rest of this stuff which is mainly sort of military colored um, and wrapped up in that then what i do is i keep this spare silver compass it's only a little ditty thing but it's still usable still workable so what i do is i wrap that around the compass itself just to keep that nice and padded and a bit more protected and then i'll put a big bungee around that just to make sure it stays on it and that just goes in the top flap there so the last thing in the top flap is i've got what i call my my kit checklist and you can see on that then what I've got is dates of when I've done things like filled my water bottle, charged up my electronics, and the run out dates for things like um, all my uh, medication in my med kit. And what I've got at the bottom there is um, 
if I've taken anything, if I've used it, if I've been out in the field and practice using it, I've got a little section there of right if I need to refill stuff. So any sort of you know rations, things like that, if I've used them up. On the other side, then what I've done is I've I've made up a thing called a personal information card. I've got my hand over my actual information, obviously. So I've got all my actual information about me. So you know my blood group, next to kin, all that sort of stuff. Um, phone numbers, email addresses. So if I did become a casualty, all my personal information is on that. So if someone was to search my kit, they could find this and actually contact my next of kin. And if they did need to give me blood, it's got my blood group on there, etc., etc. Going into the main bag then. Now you can open this up with these two zips here to a certain point and have it like a, uh, a top loading bag. So you can just get straight into your kit there, or you can totally unzip it. So what I'll do is I'll just talk about the stuff that's on this, this side of the lid here. And on this part here, you've got like an organization panel. So you've got little slots for your sort of thinner items. So what I've got here then is a pen, a pencil, a Sharpie pen, a titanium spork, and then I've got my Leatherman. Okay, so this is a, a Leatherman signal. It doesn't really matter what kind of le um, multi-tool you use i think though that it's a very important bit of kit to have in your bug out bag for obvious reasons it's got all sorts of tools on there blades stuff like that um so i think it's a, a very important thing to have in your bag okay and that just slots into one of the uh the little slots there like that um i've also got two uh chem sticks silums so i've got a blue one and a red one there so they're a good another source of, of light You've got a zip pouch here, and inside the zip pouch, I've got a waterproof notepad. So this is a mode stone pad. It's a little bit like the right in the rain pads, but actually a little bit better. Great bit of kit. Um, and what I've got on the front page, um, again, I'm not going to uh, show you that, but I've also got my personal information on that page again, just repeated on that first page. Next thing I've got in here, then, this is my electronics pouch. And this is in a, a waterproof case. This is called a Fidlock bag, okay? So these are made in Germany. And as everything the Germans make, it's, it's pretty bomb-proof. And um, basically, nice, sturdy, waterproof bag. Even if you drop that, you know, in a river or something, it's going to keep everything totally waterproof, which is why I've got my electronics in it. It's closed with a magnetic closure here. And then it opens up like so. And what I've got in there is my power bank with the associated leads for all the different electronics I've got in my bag, like my phone and stuff. Um, I've got plug, so if you wasn't in a situation where you could actually plug stuff in and recharge it, obviously you want to be using that. Um, I've got uh, an old crappy mobile phone, it's like one of those old Nokia things. Um, now the reason why I've got that is, you know, it's a secondary backup phone and actually this will last for a lot longer battery wise, it will last for a good couple of weeks than my primary normal phone. And I've got that loaded with all my important information, sorry, you know, phone numbers and stuff like that. Uh, last thing I've got in there then is a small um, pen drive. You see that there? And loaded on that again is important information and also things like my driving license, ID documents like my passport, you know, pictures of them and stuff like that. Just so if you did need to access them for some reason, you've got them right there. Okay, another thing I've got in this little pouch here then, this is my wash kit. As you can see, it's pretty compact. There's not a lot to it. Uh, the main sort of function of this is actually care, care of my teeth. All right, so I've got a small uh, folding toothbrush. Toothpaste there, this is non-scented toothpaste. So if you were in a non-permissive environment and you know people were maybe trying to find you um, and you didn't want them to, then this isn't scented. They'll, you know, normal toothpaste, you can smell it for miles and miles away. Um, I've got some dental floss there, which is obviously great for looking after your teeth, but you can also use it for repairing things as well. It's incredibly strong stuff. And I've got some wet wipes at the, at the bottom end there. Um, now, note, I've got one small pack of wet wipes. I do see lots of videos of people pulling out three, four, five packs of wet wipes. Really, you don't need them. If it's a survival scenario, yeah, it's nice to get a little bit clean and stuff, but the priority is staying alive, isn't it? It's not to flipping smell nice. Okay, top of the bag then. So loaded in priority order. First thing out of here then 
is a waterproof jacket okay so this is this packs in its own little pocket this is a rab waterproof jacket so a good one it's not a token effort like i see in a lot of people's kits um you know these these rainproof so-called rainproof ponchos these see-through things you know they're going to be useless to you um, especially if you're in a bad weather scenario again it's the summer at the moment and an hour ago it absolutely hammered it down with rain it was like a monsoon so if i was stuck out in that and i didn't have something decent to keep the water off like this then you know i'll be a bit fed up also that you know people what i do see a lot is people saying they're going to use their poncho yeah you can use it for two uses you can use it for a shelter you can use it for a rain cover that's all very well but after it's been raining all night are you really going to want to stick that thing on in the morning or are you going to want to put something else on um and also low key if you're thinking about trying to be a bit of a gray man walking through an urban environment wearing a poncho over your rucksack you're going to look like some sort of freak and you'll be spotted a mile away so personally i think it's the best idea just to take a dedicated waterproof jacket so talking of shelters this is a rab seal tarp one so this is a, a small compact um basho basically so shelter sheet or tarp um really lightweight great bit of kit um quite expensive but they really do a good job um, and with that i've got six pegs there so lightweight pegs and also i've got the cords already pre-attached on all the the strong points or the edges of the uh, the basher there the shelter sheet so that's my that's my shelter there next thing out of here then so this is a mystery ranch pack all right so what this is for is if I needed to go out on like a, a scouting mission, for want of a better term, a recce or whatever, of another area, once I've set up my base camp, then I could basically pull this out and carry a certain amount of gear with me that would last me at least 24 hours, okay? So that's what it looks like once you've kind of pulled it out of its own bag. That's it there. And I believe this is something like... 12 or 16 litres or something like that I don't know um, but you can carry a fair bit in this you can put in you know I could easily get my um, my shelter sheet in there my waterproof jacket some rations a water bottle you know stuff like that so if you was going to be out for half a day or even overnight you could easily carry enough in there to keep yourself going instead of taking all your gear it basically gives you another option all right and it folds down really small as you saw okay then you can see here i've got a water bladder it's a relatively small one it's only a liter and it's not full but that is basically just ready there to be to fill up you know if you need extra water if you come across a water source you want to get some more water it's a means of carrying it and also it's easier to drink on the move isn't it um in conjunction with that then i've got my cooking system there so i've got a cooking pot um and inside here I've got an MSR pocket rocket. You see how small that is, it's dinky. And then what I've got inside is a large gas canister there ready to go. And again, I've got a cloth for that, just so I can clean out the, the pot if needed, if I've been cooking in it. And it also stops that from rattling as well, that um, gas canister. And that all goes together inside there. And again, that's relatively compact and pretty light as well. And I've used that quite a bit in the field, that with that then i've got uh, my rations there so what i've got there then is three ball in a bag so one ball in a bag a day i've got three packets of super noodles so again one a day and i've got a whole load of porridge there at least enough for three days and then i've got a brew kit and a whole load of um, snack bars and stuff so that is at least that you know three days worth of rations there next thing i've got in here then is my sort of clothes bag you can see it's in a separate um, waterproof bag again really important to make sure your kit's waterproofed you, you have no idea what the weather's going to be doing and always pack for the worst all right so this is like a little mini dry bag inside here i've got a shemag and we all know that shemags are great for lots of good stuff you know you can use it to help filtrate water you can help um someone that's a casualty with say a broken arm or something you can make an improvised sling out of it you can you know cover your head with it there's loads of good stuff you can use that for next thing i've got this is a trc outdoors Cierzo shirt 
and I did a separate video on this. Again, I'll put a link to that in. Um, nice little windproof layer, and a, also it's made in this color here. So this is um, a night camouflage color, um, which is actually quite effective out in the woods as well. So if you needed to just throw on a layer just to keep a bit of a lower profile, then there's an option there of doing it. So in a separate um, Ziploc bag, I've got two pairs of socks and some foot powder. Okay, really important to look after your feet. Okay, something my dad taught me prior to joining the army. One of the most important things to do is look after your feet when you're out in the field. Um, so again, double waterproofness for the for the socks. Um, and when you do get the chance to change your socks, if you get wet feet, get them changed, get them powdered, so you keep yourself moving. Okay, this is a warm layer here. It's basically, it's, it's fairly lightweight, but it's a decent um, bit of warmth there. This is a mountain equipment jumper. And then the last thing I've got in here is just a spare layer. Okay, so that's a t-shirt. That's basically well, like one of those uh, sweat wicking t-shirts that you'd wear in the gym. So if you were totally saturated, either from sweat or from you know rain or falling in a river, whatever, you've got the option there of changing into something dry. Okay, last thing in here then. So this is my sleeping system right here. Um, so it's in a waterproof, again, a waterproof separate dry bag. And there's a couple of items in here. So first thing out of the bag then is a sole escape bivy, okay? So this is a, a breathable um, waterproof bivy and it also helps, you know, reflect the body heat back at you. Next thing I've got is my Thermarest sleeping mat. As you can see, it's really small, compact and light. Again, not cheap, but a great option if you're really trying to cut down on the size and weight of your bag. Um, I have used this quite a bit in the field. I have punctured it once, hence the, uh, the patches there. I was carrying patches, thank God, but you do need to make sure you take care of these, otherwise they, they can get punctured fairly easily. Um, but like I say, nice and compact and small. And then the last thing I've got in here is a sleeping bag so this is what i use in the, in the warmer months here um, this is a, a fjall raven sleeping bag and that's really nice and compact and quite light actually that sleeping bag once it's compressed in so again good for keeping your sort of weight down your all up weight and that is all the kit there so that's what i carry in my summer bug out bag okay that's based on my experience for what i perceive as a threat for the environment and the part of the world that I live in. Obviously, that will be different for different people that might be watching this in different parts of the world. You obviously put your kit together based on your experience and where you live and your environment, okay? So if anybody's got any comments, anyone's got good ideas of kit that they carry, or you know, comments or observations on what I've got in there, put them in the comments section below. Let's have a discussion. Um, thanks for your shares and subscribes. Um, keep it going, share it all and we'll be seeing you again soon. Cheers.